The tutorial begins by outlining the causes of magnetism and the ideas of magnetic domains. I then move on to electromagnetic fields, the shape of field round a single wire and round a coil, the ways in which we can see those shapes and the explanation behind the shape. The magnetic field around a long coil is illustrated and explained, as is the effect of introducing an iron core of the permeability of the material within the core of a magnet. We start with a general explanation and domains. All magnetic fields, including those of familiar bar magnets, are caused by moving electric charges. Creating the field around a permanent magnet are the moving charges of electrons within atoms within the material. Within magnetic materials, atoms exist in small groups which we call domains. Within these domains, all of the atoms spin in the same direction, creating a small magnetic field. However, within that magnetic material, adjoining domains are unlikely all to be aligned in the same way. In many cases, however, particularly, for example, in soft iron, those domains can be aligned by an external magnetic field. So that material in itself then becomes magnetic. If this was a permanent magnet, once the domains are aligned in this hard material, they stay where they are. In the relatively soft material of an electromagnet, the domains may move back once the external magnetic field is removed. Magnetic fields are vectors, they have size and direction. The field can be highlighted by using iron filings on a piece of paper, but remember that it is a three-dimensional field, it is not just flat. In drawing the field, we use simple black lines with arrows showing the direction. The closer the lines are together, the stronger the field. In this drawing, none of the lines should cross. Having said that all magnets are produced by a moving electric charge, let's look at the most simple situation. We have here a battery, a wire, and the wire passes down through a piece of card. We're going to have a look at the magnetic field around the piece of wire by sprinkling some iron filings near to it. For increased clarity, we tap the card so that the iron filings align themselves along the magnetic field. However, here, I think you need a considerable amount of imagination to actually see the field. What we're hoping for is a circular magnetic field around the wire. The magnetic field is circular and clockwise when we look in the direction that the current is flowing. We would hope to make out the magnetic field near the wire where the field is strongest. Punching several wires together, we expect to be able to see the magnetic field more easily particularly close to the wires. We're doing this here using the same procedure. We can just about make out the circular pattern, but it's hardly outstandingly clear. If we put a compass near the wire and switch the current on and off, we can see the needle swing from its north steady position to a tangent to a circle around the wire. A lot of early work in magnetic fields was done by a man called Maxwell. He defined the direction of the magnetic field around a wire carrying a current, and it's often called Maxwell's corkscrew rule. If the corkscrew is screwed in a direction of the current, then the handles of the corkscrew define the direction of the magnetic field, clockwise when you're looking in the direction that the current is flowing. A current flowing through a coil of many turns produces a much more obvious magnetic field. As the battery here is connected, the compass moves around much more quickly and immediately than it did before, and the iron filings fall into a very obvious pattern. We'll examine the shape of this magnetic field just a bit more carefully. The coil is a small version of a simple spiral coil like this. If we picture that spiral coil, and then cut it across the middle along this line. We would see the ends of the coil on each side. The current would be flowing up on one side and flowing down on the other. The crosses represent the conventional current flowing away from us and the dots represent the current coming towards us. 
If we then, rather roughly, draw in the circular magnetic fields around each of the wires, these will be clockwise at the top since the current is flowing away, and anti-clockwise at the bottom since the current is there flowing towards us. The fields around each of the wires interferes with those next to it. Between the wires, the fields are in opposite directions and so they cancel out. But above the wire and in the centre of the coil, the fields reinforce one another. This results in a strong magnetic field down the centre of the coil and a noticeable, although weaker, magnetic field in the opposite direction around the edges of the coil. In fact, the field down the centre is likely to be particularly strong, remembering that this is three-dimensional. There are parts of the coil above and below the diagram as well. We should be able to see the magnetic field more clearly with this arrangement. An open copper coil threaded onto a card, onto which we can attach a battery. The 9 volt battery will drive a large current through this low resistance copper coil. The iron filings scattered on the card highlight the magnetic field. You can see that even with these few coils, the magnetic field is strong and easily identified. Returning to the small coil, notice what happens when we put a nail near the end of the coil and then we switch the current on. The nail is jerked into the coil. If we start again with the coil and a current flowing through, scattering iron filings around, but then slide the nail inside the coil. Notice how much the magnetic field is increased, not only near the ends of the nail, but around the sides of the coil as well. Redrawing the diagram similar to the one we had before, the magnetic field through the coil is in loops, that is, down the centre of the coil and then around the ends of the coil, in a complete loop. When we introduce the nail, that magnetic field is much stronger, there are more lines and they are closer together. That is because the iron nail has much greater magnetic permeability than free space. It is much easier for the magnetic field to form in the iron, so the total field is much stronger. Although it is rather untidily and badly drawn here, because I've allowed two lines to cross. That also explains why the nail was pulled into the coil. The increased permeability of the nail reduces the total energy of the magnetic field when it moves in. If instead of having a straight iron core, we had one which was horseshoe shaped, then the magnetic field created by the current flowing through the coil would largely be within the iron core, and only a small amount of it would pass through the air. The magnetic field would therefore be a great deal stronger still. That's why strong permanent magnets and electromagnets are usually this shape. Thank you for watching.